Two Mega Pops is an achievement in Balloon's Tower Defense 6 where you need to get 2 million or more pops with a single tower throughout the game. In this desert environment, the giant... <laughs> one one. <laughs> the giant condor kind of fits by a word. It's kind of like a vulture in some ways. So let's put down a few beast handlers because... The most difficult segments of this particular 2 mega pot scenario is the early and late game. I'm hoping 3 beast handlers would do so that we can afford Geraldo soon because we're going to need Geraldo for some of the later rounds. I'm looking at you ZOMGs because the giant condor cannot attack ZOMGs but for some reason it can attack bats with its pecs, its feet, its wings. Whatever form of attack that it has it does that to the bad, but it doesn't do to the zero MG. Do you just have a fear of zero MGs, giant condors? Do you not like things that are of a similar color palette to you? I was so into a conversation that I completely forgot to put down Geraldo. So here we go. Right, we're going to be going for the Gyra Falcon and Microraptor when we can afford it. And I can put the Microraptor up here so that anytime a balloon is sent back to this point where the bird marker is, we will be able to utilize that point of when balloons should go back there so that then the Microraptor can give it more damage. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that conversation there. But it went somewhere, okay? Falcon Horn. Horn Owl. You're no Captain Falcon. Ooh, pink balloons are starting to make their way through the track here, but I hope we can keep this up. Round 24. Yeah, we've got the camo here. The bird, our wonderful L, can prey on the camos. Round 25. So, the idea of all these beast handers is very simple. We need range across the entire track. And by having this range, we all oh, that last little bit there at the moment safely. Um, having that range means that the birds can go anywhere and pick stuff up. And with the Adasaurus, we need more range so that then we can explore, exploit every single fragment of the track. So, what we're going to need is... I am thinking we need you. Going to need you. And you adopted to that. So that we can put the Atosaurus on any fragment of the track. And we can pop ZOMGs. Or damage ZOMGs. Because we're going to need both Jerry's Fire and the Adasaurus in order to take down the ZOMG layer. <laughs> oh, can I... Are you going to believe this when I say that the ZOMGs are the most difficult aspect of this entire challenge with the two Mega Pops or with the Giant Condor because I cannot pick them up and Ninja Kiwi forgot to put the added benefit of it being able to attack them. All right, so I'm going to put the Falcon on... Well, all of these upgrades on the horn out here. We're going to be going for Golden Eagle soon. When we have the money, we will get it. It's cheaper overall by getting a Max Power Golden Eagle. Just upgrade all of these to Horned Owls rather than upgrading one of them to Golden Eagle. Because get plus two, it's cheaper this way than going for the Golden Eagle on a, another Beast Handler. Because then we'll be able to get to round 40 with a Max Powered Golden Eagle much more swimmingly, which is what we need in order to counter the first Moab. Okay, we're one power away from this. So let's place down another beast handler. Let's just put him over here for namesake. And then merge you with that. And therefore with a max powered one. Because if it's not max powered, it won't be able to grab the Moab itself and keep it in that spot. Next objective is going to be a giant condor. Did you know that condors in the game of golf are four under par when it comes to a score a minus four so let's say on a par six hole you would have to get a score of two to get a condor speaking of condors we can now purchase our beloved brethren of the sky now what we are going to acquire is well more golden eagles to be honest we need all the golden eagles 
in order to fully buff our giant condor here up to 64. But there's something else that we need to keep mind of first. First of all, all of these... <laughs> can I play inks? Uh, okay, so... Temporary means of camo detection required. Because these are pretty tough, not gonna lie. I'm, 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 I'm somehow flabbergasted that all those pinks made it through the round. But I realised we only had one means of attack. And that one means of attack can only do so much when um, our dinosaur friend is not doing anything. Round 49 is going very smoothly. Had a few ceramics go this way. But aside from that, we're in the clear. Regrows? What are those? Never heard of a concept before. Yeah, this should be a very good tower against regrows as long as there's not too many of them. But then again, you could say about that, that about any tower. But the way this thing damages them, it's almost like the regrow property doesn't even occur. Golden Eagle, Golden Eagle. We require 15 more power. So, 5, 10, 15. Works out perfectly. It's all balanced as it should be. What? Why are you... Why are you attacking them? Is it when they're grabbed? Oh, for goodness sakes. I had an issue with another video where Geraldo was just suddenly attacking balloons for no rhyme or reason. It just happens without an explanation. I think it's when the giant condor is grabbing balloons. Max powered condor online. More like alive, not online. Makes it sound like it's a mechanical bird rather than a real living heart beating creature so what i'm thinking now is we need firstly to give this thing some camera detection so that the little dinosaur can pop gamos but i am thinking though that we need a means of being able to enhance our glue gunners later on so that is why we are going with two particular villages one is to give camera section and the MIB soon because we're going to need the MIB in order to be able to pick up DDTs because at this kind of stage of the game the giant condor cannot pop lead and what is DDT? well a part of it is lead so therefore we cannot pick it up that's why we need MIB also an added bonus is over Jerry's fire can actually pop purples but that's the less important factor to give it the uh, the MIB treatment. They're still helpful. Round 63, how are we going to fare here with all these balloons? Yeah, clumped up balloons somehow are easier to deal with than spaced out ones. And I think I know why. It's because its attack has an AoE. So therefore, anything within that AoE, as long as it has enough pierce cap, therefore it will be able to pop all of them. Which is why it dealt with those clumped up ceramics so easily okay jungle drums is needed but what else is needed yeah we'll just buy mib now so we don't have to worry about that later on we've got the beast handers that we require down we can move our dinosaur anywhere on the track well almost anywhere but we'll be able to attack zero mgs over here they're over at this point so i'm not worried about that so our next course of action is trying to slow down balloons. We need like absolute zero balloon sabos and relentless glue. Not glue storm. It's um, inadvised to have glue storm or glue strike because of the added damage where absolute zero will do against these. But how Gerardo can attack from here, I don't know. <laughs> Gerardo is a man of mystery. Also, at very, very infrequent times, can attack through obstacles. What are you, an alchemist? Next up, we're going to need call to arms. The sole reason is we need all the firepower possible in order to take down the ZOMG. And the giant condor cannot attack or pick up the ZOMG, making the bird itself completely useless against the ZOMG but we need to pop it with this specific tower. So, Jerry's fire, and 
I'm going to put Sharpie Stone on it now because they can be replaced with the better variant of Sharpie Stone, but you cannot replace the better variant. So you cannot replace the the, um, the first variant of Jerry's Fire with the better variant of Jerry's Fire, which is really odd. But I guess it's kind of like a projectile that moves around the intended tower rather than being something that is innate to the tower itself. So that could be a reason why. Now 78, all these ceramics are bloody hell. Like I don't usually say that, but this is such a strong tower against huge groups of balloons that are clumped up together. Moab, you're gonna spawn? There we go. And I love putting you under one of these for that bit more money saving, but also a bit more range as well. And there goes the other group of ceramics. I love this thing. And this is going to probably excel against these regrow rainbows as well. Like, if they're not too clumped up, obviously, to the point where our pierce cap will be gone. Okay, call to arms is definitely going to be foreseeable. It is foreseeable. It is certain. There we go. We need this round set for round 80. We need the call to arms. We need that increased firepower with the two mega poppable tower in mind. Also, there's a little gap here where I can put this down pop it and here we go round 80 so i may have done that a bit too soon but nonetheless we're in this in the long run so the adasaurus with the jerry's fire is going to ensure that we can pop the cmg and this is going to take a long time <sighs> insert elevator music while also having a pint of coffee I mean, shader. I drink socially. I don't ever... I'm not one of those people that rely on alcohol for their day-to-day -day needs, regardless of what you go through throughout your day-to-day. -day. Because when it comes to these sort of things, it's really complicated because the human psyche is a very complicated thing to understand. We're all individuals at the end of the day, and we all have different means of coping with stresses in life. But... I've never found life stressful enough to resort to alcohol, but then again, I'm not in the position to feel that way. And rather than, I don't know, degrading people because of that, I feel it's better to try and understand their perspective and why they do that, rather than just outright bullying a person because they do that. If you fail to understand a person's perspective, you're not going to get along with them, and you're also going to fail to also try and understand others with that kind of mindset there. This is very close now. There we go. Pick them up. And because of this track's layout, the entrance and exit are pretty much the same point of the track, which is why this is such a nice map for this particular 2MP. It's because you can just quickly drag them to a point where it looks like it's the end, but it's actually the very start. So, if I move this cursor down here, then obviously that's a very bad thing. Because rather than being 10% of the way through the track, they're like 90% of the way through the track. A uh, giant condor. So, our next objective is Sabos. We're done with the um, increase attack speed and pierce sort of thing. It's mainly for the attack speed sort of thing, because the giant condor has plenty of pierce to begin with, I believe. But... I will take whatever pierce increase we can get. It's also one of the few things in which we have not used an ultra... Sorry, a overclock for. There's actually only a few things I've used ultra boost for. <laughs> ultra juggernaut. Clumped up super ceramic. Some of them fortified. And... God, this is dealing such a great deal of damage against them. I don't know how it's doing it, but I love this bird. I love birds in general. They're such three majestic creatures they have pretty much an unlimited amount of space and there's no such thing as a busy traffic in the sky unless of course it's an airplane so therefore anything within a <laughs> with anything within a short distance mind you they're like 500 mile an hour traveling things so short distance is dramatically larger than our version of short distance when it comes to on the ground, where we're barely moving while, well, in a car sometimes, or in the city traffic, or, or when it comes to just walking. 
like short distances pretty much like seconds away before well a second away before somebody is going to um well come in contact with you so let's see adasaurus i should have used it earlier on in the round let's see another sabo we will take all the sabos we can get you have a sabo and you have a sabo we need all the well four sabos that we can get Otherwise, these ZMGs, with their enhanced amount of HP and speed, will be able to get through this round. Oh dear, they're moving. We need a second relentless glue, one for over here as well, on the right hand side, so that we can continuously blob them and slow them down. But this is our life at the moment, so we just have to deal with it. Drodo, why are you attacking them? You have no line of sight of them, honestly. I think it's their, t sometimes it's their tail end. Like, if their butt is literally sticking right towards Geraldo, then possibly they can do that. I just thought of something that I was talking about in the previous video, I believe, where I did 23 Mega Pops and all Pops up to around 140, end off with the Pirate Lord, is that which tier five tower would take longer to, will get through round 97? Would it be, the Balloon Crush, which is what I was thinking of. But there was another town which I knew was there, but I couldn't think of a name of. But I have found it out now. The Superstorm. Which one would take longer to get for round 97, sorry, as the sole popping tower of that particular round? And I was just thinking of that meme from Kung Fu Panda. It's like, finally, a worthy opponent. Our battle will be legendary. <laughs> and I just think of that with... <laughs> I just think of that with the Blue Crush and the Superstorm as which one would take longer to get through the round. Finally, a worthy opponent as they, as they lock eyes. Our battle will be legendary. Call to arms again. As soon as we get out of the ZOMG phase, it's pretty much self-explanatory. The Giant Condor picks them up. I wonder if anybody has accidentally said Giant Condor rather than Giant Condor. <laughs> I don't know why that thought just came to my head. Oh dear. Sometimes when you're in some insane scenarios, you think of some whack stuff that you would not normally come up with otherwise. That's just life in general. Round 87. Oh, the same amount of issues as round 85, but just twice the number of them. Uh, uh, for ZMGs, I hope the Adasaurus has enough fears to try and get through this entire round. I hope so. We've only got three Sabos on the field, so I don't know how that affects our performance, but as long as we have ourselves in check, I we completely forgot to put the Sharpling Stone on our giant condor as well, so that we can do a little bit more damage and have a little bit more pierce, but it's mainly the damage aspect that matters more, because the giant condor apparently has pen plenty of pierce to begin with, but I don't look at the code of a game to try and fathom this sort of stuff out, because that's boring! Looking for a code of a game is very, very intrusive! I don't have hold anything against people who do, though. To find out, like, this tower at this stage, with these buffs, with this upgrade, does X amount of damage and has X amount of pierce. Like, I have nothing against people who do that sort of thing. But I'd rather discover, you through, discover these things through actually playing the game rather than observing the game's, like, endos, exoskeleton, sorry, from a, a perspective that is not in the game. Geraldo, why are you attacking at times? I, I don't understand this. I don't understand this. They're there, but yet sometimes you can attack. It's like sometimes you keep your left eye shut, but then other times you keep it open. <laughs> That's what I'm feeling like right now with Geraldo, is that sometimes they can attack, and other times they cannot. Uh, meanwhile, the elitists of a Balloon Tower Defense 6 community that are an incredible minor. Well, actually, the reason why is because when the ZMG is in this position, you will be able to attack it despite the fact that there is an obstacle that would have, I know it's not completely, but the majority of his, his vision should be blocked. Maybe I should have put him behind that cactus over there, actually. Perhaps that would have been better. I don't know why I put two Sabbaths on the field simultaneously. Might have had. Come on now. We're nearly there. Just a little more. Come on now. 
output's going to be intrinsically worse as dealing with round 97 because of, well, the fact that the ZMGs are fortified. Uh, sorry for the shriek there. I'm just not looking forward to round 97. Oh, there is a little bit of a pierce gap, actually. Pierce cap, actually. So maybe the... Um, of course, for arms would be better off used when these are turned into, well, the Moabs and the ceramics. Like, these are trying to pick them up all the way over here, which can kind of be a little bit unhealthy. Like, sometimes you need a balance between the start and the end, because in this case, the start, middle, and end. Start and end are literally the same place, but the middle point over here is on the completely opposite end of the track. Uh, Okay, let's move about the Adasaurus so that it targets the ZOMGs. We need all the power we can get, and we're... We are just shy of the fourth balloon, Sabo! This game really hates me! Round 88, the same as round 84, 5. <laughs> well, we only had two ZMGs on, except we have a few more things added on top to make it a little bit more spicy. Oh dear. The life of this is truly insane. How are we going to stop the round 97 ZMGs? It's very simple. Absolute zero chances. The clue is within what I just said there. Absolute zero. Get it? Oh well. Uh, call to arms! Come into play here, please! We should be able to mull these ZMGs down sooner. There we go. It's pretty much instantaneous. I thought there are going to be other rounds where there's going to be many more ZMGs clumped up together, where it's going to be a bit problematic when it comes to being able to um, uh, get all of them targeted by both the Adasaurus and the, um, the Jerry's Fire here. Round 89. The only purpose we have when it comes to the invisibility potion at this stage of the game is being able to do that little bit more bonus damage against ceramics which is why we're not going to be putting down the um, invisibility potion until round i think it's round 95 or 6 when we go to level 18 i don't know Geraldo levels up pretty quickly when it comes to like round 96 97 98 then 99 but then again, that could be said of all the rounds. Oh gosh, these fortified BFBs are taking ages, but at least they're not getting anywhere close to the end of a track. Round 90. DDT territory now. And they will be handled with just like that. But we need the absolute zero. We need to be able to deal with this. Let's put them as far away as possible so that they have as little chance of being able to pop or sorry damage moab because even though it has this range here sometimes i feel like its range is longer i'm not talking about the aura effect i'm talking about the actual attack like being able to attack with them sometimes i feel like it can attack outside of its radius but maybe that's just me and my limited experience everyone has limited experience some not as limited as others, and that is perfectly okay. Snowstorm! I hope we'll be able to afford the absolute zero by round 97. If not, we might need to restart this entire scenario, because honestly, I don't feel like I'm going to be able to do this without that perma slow on the ZMGs and for the ability itself to make it freeze for longer, because right now it goes away almost immediately and the permafrost effect of the top half of the um, the uh, ice tower uh, doesn't apply to Moabs unless, of course, it is at the stage of absolute zero. Uh, I didn't mean to select two of those. Oh, for goodness sakes. Now they're going to make it to the end of a track just a little bit more quickly. Yeah, if I fail this round, it's because I spam click to be... Um, the uh, balloon sabo ability there, but that's absolutely fine. Our chances here are looking a little bleak, but not all hope is lost. Hope is not lost until the fat lady sings. And you all know that. <laughs> Come on, please. Pop the museum cheese. Oh, balloon sabo wasn't active there. Please. Okay, the last one. There we go. Just pick them up, giant condor, and ensure that they stay 
over on that side of a track. Beauty of this track is because of the fact that we can just pick them up and switch lanes. I know you can do that with pretty much a lot of tracks, switch lanes with them, being able to prioritize them. Like, it's very unique with this particular tower that on multi-lane tracks, you can pick up a balloon that is on one track and then move it to another track, which is more desired based on your needs. Like, I think that is a very unique mechanic with this particular tower. With this particular creature. Okay, Sabo again with the DDTs. Come on now. Come on now. You can do it. Please. Please, with a cherry on top, you can do it. It did do it. Now it's just these behemoths. I think round 94, in a lot of cases, the first, oh crap, look at the amount of balloons that there are on the screen that are of this size. Like, look at everything here. It's just pretty much overwhelming at times. All these ZMGs here. And speaking of ZMGs, I feel like this is going to be the first round where it's going to take multiple stages. As in, like, multiple um, chomps to try and get through all of the ZMGs. That's probably a poor explanation, but it's like... When the ZMGs are kind of spaced out like this, the Adasaurus is only able to attack so many of them at any given point in time. So if they were spaced out like this, we won't be able to properly go through with this. Are we still here? Okay, the pops are finally starting. But I honestly feel we've not done enough damage against these last few, but I don't feel like we're going to be able to do this. Oh, 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 come on. Last one, or oh, last, oh, damn it, last two. Uh, use those. Come on, pop them. Come on. Come on, last one. Yes. Come on, pick them up into, yes. It picks up multiple BFBs. I love that. It's not just a single one, it can pick up a multiple ones. Now we should be able to get a lot of money out of these few Z... Well, several ZMGs, actually. Can't keep going. Don't let their numbers consume your... Consume thy flesh. Big old... I was about to call it Vulture. But it seems really well adept in this environment. Like, like you normally find birds of like this within the deserts because they're harsh environments in which they can survive in. Me not explain anything while also thinking that this is a thing. It's a classic me moment, to be honest. There we go. Now let's start the party, but this is going to be a very difficult round. Look at all of these DDTs that we need to try and control here. Uh, yeah, we're going to need to micro this when it comes to the all... I don't know the world's going with that, but we need need to definitely control this round. But this is not looking too good. But when they come nearer to a point where they're going to drag them back, I feel like this is going to be a bit of an easier time. A little bit. Come on, drag them. Don't let their numbers consume you. The snowstorm actually helps as well. Slows them down just enough time so it can keep dragging them back. <laughs> no, you go back. You don't ever exit the track. You go back. I will play with you as long as it's necessary. You go back to that point over there. Where's that other source, actually? Okay, it's cool. It's over there. You go back and play with my little friend down there. He loves to bite. The bite of 87. Are we there yet? Is this still a dream? Are you here? Are we all here? Has everybody left? Oh. Oh well. Ah, don't leave. Unless you have something important to do, then don't leave. Right. Round 95 is finally finished. All those DDTs. Honestly, but that got damage that we did. Unless we were able to pick them up and put them over there. Yeah, that would have been nigh on impossible to try and do, really. But we're going to have ourselves an absolute zero very, very soon. There is absolutely zero chances that we will not be purchasing the absolute zero. But we're going to need to rely on the snowstorm to try and slow down these ceramics. Because we are... Oh, I forgot to micro the first portion of this round. So that we can get these under wraps. I should have placed this... I should have... 
I should have placed the Adasaurus at the start of the track so I can start damaging these OMGs. Come on, please. I unleashed two of them at the same time. Bloody hell. Why am I like this? Why do I just spam click stuff without realizing what I'm doing? Okay, there we go. This is a roller coaster in and of itself. It's not particularly hard, but it's just monotonous and in some cases boring. Much like a total transformation to Megapods. But that was actually stressful. Stressful, monotonous, boring. <laughs> Anything that is nah. Okay, absolute zero time. Now they can be slowed down permanently. Although, the only benefit to round 97 is that we only have two of them to deal with. Yes, two fortified behemoths of this kind. We have not failed in any of these late rounds. Let this not be the first. Please pop them, ZWIM. Jeez. Uh, we're not even... It feels like we're not even close at times to doing this. Come on, please. Why do you suck so much, Condor? Why don't you target them? Uh, they're ripe for the pecking. But yet, you just decide to sit there and... Oh, fly there and do nothing. I was say sit, but you don't sit. You, you stay doing nothing. And I spammed that again. Come on. Call to arms. Do something. <laughs> and near the end of the track. Oh, freeze him. Bring him back. I think the absolute zero play saved me. Come on, last one. Don't let it escape. Pick it up. Please. You gotta be joking me! Oh, oh the last one! <laughs> Why don't you jump through one more layer of them, dinosaur? We can all agree that this time around, this is a better placement for it at the very start. Okay, for some other reason, despite being clearly outside of the range of being able to attack, it's still able to attack. Why are you this way, Absolute Zero? Why are you such a buffoon? You're doing a Gerardo on me at the moment where you can attack where you clearly cannot. Are their hitboxes just that big enough so that you can actually incite violence at this distance? There we go, finally! Yeah, placing the dinosaur at the start of the track proven to be the better choice rather than just leaving out here at the very start of the track and realizing why, why am I not doing as well as I usually do? Except for the fact that they go at an increased speed and, well, at more health. That's how free, free play works in this game. Let's put another blue gunner over here so that we can target Zoom G's over on this portion of the track. And it should be able to reach over there, actually, because of how big their hitbox are. If the absolute zero can hit balloons over here, then surely this will be able to reach over there as well. Round 97. Prepare for the longest round of your entire life. Can you explain yourself, Gerardo, as to why you can do this at times? Oh, oh, I should have placed you further away. This cactus is obviously not a big enough obstacle for you. I should have placed you further back here. I have to say, though, this is nowhere near as boring as, let's say, a Superstorm or a Balloon Crush around Night 7. Because you do have to move your dinosaur about and use your abilities so that you can, you know, do the round. But with Balloon Crush and Absolute... And, um, and Superstorm, it's just literally a waiting game because you have to rely on that one tower to do all the bops, but yeah, it does barely any damage and it stores them in a way that makes them go further back. But at least this, we're just slowing down and down and down. We should be pretty close now. The only advantage we have over the previous round is that we have less of these to deal with, so the pierce requirement is less for this round than round 96. So, but they have t more than twice the HP, normally twice the HP because we've gone up and around. Oh, there we go. The destruction has started. Finally, there is an end in sight. Round 98, what can we do on this round, which we couldn't do on the previous round? Well, the Adasaurus is going to have himself a ball day with his ZMGs. We're going to hopefully be solely relying on our Condor here. Sorry, the giant Condor. 
in order to deal with all these fortified BFBs. But it's not going to be easy just because they're sheer numbers. Their numbers make them dangerous. Not just their each individualistic health cap, but it's their, their numbers. Numbers are sometimes a greater weapon than individual strength. It's like a, a swarm of Japanese hornets. I think that's a poor example because they're actually quite deadly when it's done several times. I think of like any um, very, very powerless creature that cannot do a huge amount on its own, but when in a horde or in a swarm, that's when their st greatest strength comes out, their numbers. This is one of the fewest scenarios where round 97 is harder than round 98 because by the time these are going to be popped, I believe these should be dealt with. Because of the fact that the giant condor cannot pick up or target these, this is actually a good thing this time around because of the fact that we can pick off these fortified balloons and keep them back here for as long as possible, whereas we can chip and melt away at the health of these ones over here without them being affected by the um, condor in any way. But still, we're in the Milan run, I swear the um, Tyrannosaurus Rex would have been an easier path. Just pair it with anything that could reduce this ability cooldown and you are... And also maximize its beast power, much like with this case, and you'll have yourself a steady time. The giant condor has only started to, like, take down the BFB layer, so... We are definitely in this for a bit of a longer haul than we realize, because once these ZMGs start popping, the Condor will change its targeting towards this part of the track here, where the freshly spawned BFBs have come about from the ZMGs. But we are getting there. But we are finding out that we are running into a little bit of a pierce cap issue here. Relentless glue, and then after that, after that, we will mean business. Although, I wonder if I should have... We still have a lot of money left to earn in this round, though. That's a thing. We still have a huge amount of money left to earn. So, we should be able to get a spike storm up and running at some point. I hope so. Well <gasps> I thought they were at the end of a track, but they were just at the beginning. <laughs> no, thank you. Don't give me a heart attack. But, oh, it's... um. It's for creepy idols that are doing it. Would you stop attacking these loose balloons outside of your ability? Fast forward, it's safe to do this now. Now that the ZMGs have been popped and we don't require any more dinosaur microing. Probably just a little bit both around 100 though, that's the thing. Around 100 for the bad. Very bad news. Okay. Oh, do we have enough? Oh, oh my gosh. Do we have enough to do this? That's the thing. I hope so. I know the shop is complete. We'll get more creepy idols, but we definitely need the spike storm first. Can we get the money in this round, please? Do not leave me broke for this round. <laughs> for the next round. Please. Oh my, oh my. Uh, can we do this, please? Okay, we've still got these DDTs left to pop and several Moabs to pop. Oh, this is looking very tight when it comes to money. Please, there we go. Okay, I was about to have a fit if we didn't have enough money for the next round. Okay, so there's that. So put that one there and then put this one here. And then put this on here. And what else can we put down? Oh yeah, that's bugged now. We can't use any more abilities, so that's a thing. So we can't instantly rejuvenate our means of uh, doing a spike storm or anything like that. Uh, we're going to have to kind of play the waiting game here. I'm actually really worried about the ZMG, actually. Like, we could have done with the money to do a reju potion. Oh, Relentless Glue! That's just... That's, uh, that's something I just discovered, actually. Relentless Glue was the thing that kind of crippled us here. I should not have gotten that second Relentless Glue. Cool to arms, then Relentless Glue. 
Ah, uh, I think that's the, that's you did better results actually. Just wait until the call to arms comes back and then use the spike storm. Get that 50% more output going on there. Because I think we have shredded through more layers, which is what we needed. So I hope we only require a second spike storm to get through all this. Let's see. Call to arms. There we go. Hopefully. Yeah, that's done it actually. That's done it. And also cleared all those glues. Let's see. 23k. 27k. Uh, yeah, this is definitely in the bag actually. So where is my Adasaurus when it comes to other things? So yeah, let's slow them down as much as possible. We need to whittle down these as much as possible. We have our idols over here. So that hopefully we'll be able to do this. No more spike storms now. We have to solely rely on this to get us through the end of the game here. I should not have gotten Relentless Glow. <laughs> that was dumb of me to do that. Uh, I should have just went with Moab Glow and then put the rest on Rejo Persian so that we would be at a better point here. But we have to play as we lie. Come on now, we can do this. Uh, why are you going so fast? It feels like you're going so fast anyways. Just keep spamming those absolute zeros whenever it appears and use balloon sabos when you need to use them. I.e. when a, one of them has run out. Just like that one. Come on. I'm not satisfied until those ZMG layers are popped. Absolute zero. Come on now, please. Uh, I don't want to restart this again. I didn't restart it again, by the way. But I don't want to go back to the restart. I don't want to go back to round six just to fix a single upgrade error. <laughs> well, not error, but decision I made. Come on, you can do this now. Once the Zoom G layers are cleared, we are in the win. Come on, please. You can do it. Yes. Yes! Oh, sorry for that. <laughs> Surely we've got this in the bag now. Oh gosh, that felt so good. See those ZMG layers get rinsed. Come on. Yeah, we've got it. It's just a matter of survival now. We have done it. Two million and ten thousand pops. We've done it. That is... A two megapots with the giant condor. Paired with the Adasaurus as well. Very much needed if you want to deal with those early round leads. But once you get yourself your MIB up and running, the giant condor can deal with the leads as well. So anyone who gets a tier 5 that it can by default pick up and target leads. So that folks was a... If I... I made it more difficult for myself by buying Relentless Glue. If I didn't have do that, then I would have been able to use a Reju Potion just after using the Spike Storm. Actually, I could have called to arms. I should have unleashed earlier on in the round of 99 so that then I'd be able to have it instantaneously for round 100. Use call to arms at the, at the start of the round, then use Spike Storm immediately afterwards, then use a Reju Potion, and then do the same thing again with a Spike Storm. And then that would have made it so the ZMGs would appear, and the DDTs as well, appear much, much, much earlier. Although, the one thing that could have come about is this taking away too many pops. So that is a thing. That is definitely a thing in and of itself. Because, as you saw, the giant condor was attacking the bad. But it wasn't attacking the ZMGs at any given point in time. So that makes no sense. Maybe it just doesn't like targets that are of the same primary shade of color. I'm saying shade of color because people think I'm going to be racial. And that's not, that's not what I'm getting at here, okay? Perception of color. Thank you all so much for watching, everybody. This has been a two megapods with the giant condom. And we shall see each other in the next video. When update 40 releases. Thank you all so much for watching and take care of yourselves, everybody.